Liberty Ridge Farms treats everyone with respect and dignity. Uh, they have uh, and will not discriminate against anyone. That's James Trainer. He is the attorney for Liberty Ridge Farm in Rensselaer County. State Human Rights Commission handed down a, a big ruling, and the owners of Liberty Ridge Farm have been fined a total of thirteen grand, fifteen hundred each to two women. They turned down when they said no to hosting a same-sex uh, marriage for religious reasons. And uh, joining us now to help us break down the ruling and its implications, Chas Farcher from Martin Harding Mazzotti. Hey, Chas. Good morning, Chuck. How are you? I'm doing great. So, what, what are, what's the basis of the Human Rights uh, Commission's decision here? You know, I mean, essentially what it is is that whenever a business holds themselves out as being open to the public, you know, the business really gives up its right to decide which members of the public they're going to allow on a, onto their property or into their business and which ones they're not. You know, if you're going to be a public business and you've got to allow the public in, in completely, you can't decide that you don't want certain people based upon race, gender, uh, creed, sexual orientation. Those are protected classes. And you know, so that that's the issue here. I see this similar as to someone who owns an apartment or, or rental units, and they can't decide to not rent to someone because you don't like their um, their race or their religion or their gender or their sexual preference. Yep. Again, that's very similar. You got it. And that you know, the only distinction or the only exemption really would be to that is if you have something that's you know distinctly private. If you're renting out a room in your own private residence or you're not, you know, holding yourself open to the, the public in general. And that's not the case with Liberty Ridge Farm. They were holding weddings there. They were operating as a wedding venue. They'd had over 35 weddings in the last 20 years. And, you know, the, the only reason that they didn't want this particular wedding was because the, the couple was, the, you know, a same-sex couple. Now, let's say let's say they had no—see, they said they've had, they had same-sex receptions there. Just They just didn't want that wedding ceremony there. But I, I understand you said they've had multiple, numerous heterosexual weddings there. If they had a policy of not doing any weddings there but only receptions, would they have been in the clear? I think so. I think if you didn't do— any weddings, you only did receptions, and if they were going to do receptions, they didn't have a problem with it being same-sex uh, couples, and they didn't, you know, qualify it in the nature that I think they'd be okay. So I think the only way around it would be to stop doing weddings overall. Like I said, once you decide you're going to do it, you got to kind of do it for everyone. You can't pick and choose which classes of people you're going to do it for. Where I'm confused now is this Hobby Lobby ruling kind of muddied the waters a little bit, where... The Supreme Court said that they can cite religious reasons for not providing certain uh, benefits to its employees. And so they, if this Liberty Ridge owners say, we're citing our religious beliefs not to perform these marriages that we don't believe in, it violates our religious beliefs, how is that different? You can always count on the Supreme Court to muddy the waters, can't you, <laughs> Kelly? <laughs> you know, where I think where it's different is this, is that with the Hobby Lobby decision, it focused on Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, and whether or not employees, employers had to provide, uh, you know, uh, preventative measures for sex protection and birth control. That's not a protected class, whereas here you're talking about a business just not wanting to do business with an entire class of people. So I think that the right to birth control is a little different than a, a protected class of people, such as AIDS, race, sexual orientation. Speaking to our legal analyst, Chas Farcher, now it looks as if uh, the farm may appeal the ruling. And on what grounds would you imagine they would appeal it? You know, essentially they would re-argue the same thing, uh, you know, that their right to uh, religious freedoms had been violated, or, you know, the basis of their argument under, underneath was that they're a distinctly private club, and therefore the, you know, the Human Rights Act doesn't apply to them. If you're a distinctly private club or a religious organization, say the Knights of Columbus or a church, then you get away from this and you can, you can exclude certain people. But I don't know that they will if they do... You know, the, the percentage of succeeding at appeal is less than one than one in ten. And for them to try and argue again that they're distinctly private, I think it's a hard sell when, you know, everything about their business seems to be advertised to the public as a whole. And uh, the women each got fifteen hundred dollars. That seemed to be kind of an arbitrary amount. I mean, how did how does how does the, how do they decide what the award should be? Well, you know, when they're looking at what the damages are going to be, there's two parts to it. There's a civil fine or penalty. So in this case it was ten thousand dollars. The purpose of that is to act as a deterrent to Liberty Ridge Farm to not allow them to do this in the future unless they want to get hit with another penalty. And then the second portion of that monetary amount, uh, $1,500 to each of the plaintiffs, is for mental anguish. I think here, you know, one, there wasn't really a whole lot of malicious intent or animosity, so to speak. You know, there, the, 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 the same-sex couple that was involved, it's not like they had gone through and planned their entire wedding and then were told no the day before. Really what it was was, a series of one or two phone calls to Liberty Ridge, and then after it was discovered they were a same-sex couple, Liberty Ridge 
decided they weren't going to host a wedding. So I think it's a degree of involvement, how much malicious intent is involved. All of that goes into you know the number when determining what they should hand the plaintiffs in terms of the you know mental anguish going through this. Thanks, Chaz. Great talking to you. Have a great day, guys. Our legal analyst, Chaz Farcher from Martin Harding Mazzotti.